This video will attempt to show you how Ethernet works in your average everyday networks today. Um, all of the concepts that we deal with when talking about Ethernet, they're going to re rely upon MAC addresses. These MAC addresses identify as senders, they identify receivers, they identify default gateways, they, they identify pretty much every source or destination within your Ethernet network. Now the problem with any Ethernet communication is all of your devices know their own MAC addresses, but they don't always know the destination MAC address. If you got two PCs talking to each other, how does the first PC find out what the second PC's MAC address is? There's no lookup table anywhere uh, on the network. There's no uh, phone book or anything of the sort, uh, unlike what we deal with with TCP IP and in particular with IP addresses. There's DNS that will keep track of all the IP addresses and the, the computers that correspond with them. There's nothing like that with Ethernet and MAC addresses. So what we're going to use instead is something called the Address Resolution Protocol. ARP uses two messages to convert an IP address to the MAC address that corresponds with it. Uh, we send out an ARP request from the sending computer, and that's broadcast out for everyone to hear. And then the one computer that has that destination IP address will respond with its MAC address in an ARP reply message. That ARP reply will be sent directly back to the sending computer, whoever sent out the original ARP request. And then that sending computer will now have that destination computer's MAC address. All right, so we're going to show you two examples here. Uh, we're going to show you one example about uh, communication within a subnet and then another example showing communication between computers on separate subnets. So this first one is intra-subnet or within subnet communication. Um, we've got a scenario here. Computer A needs to communicate with computer B on this network. Uh, computer A knows its MAC address is this made up uh, all A's MAC address for simplicity. Computer A does not know computer B's MAC address. Okay, This is a common, common setup at this point. Also here we've got a switch and that switch does not know any information about who's plugged into what and what the MAC addresses are that are on the network. Computer A also knows that it has its IP address and subnet mask and default gateway and all that kind of stuff. Uh, computer A knows that it needs to talk to something called Computer B so we'll just assume for now that we're going to do a DNS lookup. That's you know concept for another class, a network infrastructure type class. But Hopefully that you're somewhat familiar with that, that uh, process. Computer A talks to a DNS server, says, can you give me the IP address of computer B? The DNS server hopefully will have that entry on record and tell computer A what computer B's IP address actually is. Once we have that, now computer A knows its MAC address. It knows its IP address. It knows the destination IP address, but it doesn't know the destination MAC address. There's no lookup table anywhere to keep track of that. So this process will explain how we figure that out and how we get the communication where it needs to go. So computer A is going to start this off by taking computer B's IP address, the 192.168.1.200 IP address, and we're going to end it with computer A's subnet mask. This is the 255.255.255.0. We do that anding and the result comes out to be 192.168.1.0. Right, why is that useful? because the ending process gave us 192.168.1.0. Computer A's network ID is 192.168.1.0. Therefore, they are the same, and that means that both computers are on the same subnet. That's why we go through this ending process, is we need to identify, is that destination computer on our subnet, or are we going to have to pass this on to the default gateway? Once we identify that it's on the same subnet, now we know how to proceed. What do we do next? We send out that ARP request, that ARP broadcast. Computer A is the one that's going to be sending this out. Computer A is going to send out an ARP request that's going to have its MAC address as the source. Now, these ARPs are broadcast messages, or at least the ARP request is. So that means it's going to be sent out to the all F's destination MAC address. That means that if there's a computer C, computer D, computer E all plugged into this switch, into this network, into this subnet, they're all going to hear this message. Everyone on this network is going to hear the message. A lot of times if you do a 
uh, capture with Wireshark, they'll actually show you that the message basically says, who has this IP address, tell that IP address. Okay. This is looking at the IP level. So computer A is looking for this, whoever has the 1.200 IP address, because it needs to know their MAC address. Whenever that person or that computer responds, they're supposed to respond directly to 1.100. Alright, so the switch is going to get this message. Okay, and that's what switches do. They, they take the traffic from computer to computer, bring it into the switch here, and then the switch figures out which direction we need to send this out. But if you notice, there was no entry. There were no entries in the MAC address table. So what it's going to do is it's just found out some information. It just found out that computer A's MAC address is located off port fast ethernet 01. So this switch adds that information to its MAC address table. Okay. The problem is this is a broadcast message. So switches do with broadcast what, what they're supposed to and that is they flood the frame out all the connected ports. Here we only have one other connected port that's fast ethernet 02 but if we had you know a 24 port switch and computer A just sent out a broadcast all of the other 23 ports on that switch are going to receive this broadcast, including the one that connects to computer B. So this switch then forwards this message on out the port that computer B is connected to. Once computer B gets this message, it can identify that it's the one that's the target of that ARP broadcast, because it's the one who has that IP address that's supposed to be the destination. Okay. So, computer B is going to create a unicast packet here. This is going to be a unicast message that it responds to computer A with. It's going to have as its source MAC address, the all B's MAC address, which is it, its own. And then it's going to have as a destination MAC address, the all A's MAC address, which is computer A's MAC address. So it packages up that ARP response and sends it onto the wire that message reaches the switch and the switch takes a look at that message and realize this is coming in from all B's MAC address through fast ethernet 02 so without worrying about the contents of the message the switch just notes that it now knows that the all B's MAC address is off fast ethernet 02 it then looks up in its MAC address table trying to find the destination MAC address which is the all A's MAC address Computer B was sending this to the all A's MAC address for computer A. So then the switch takes a look through the MAC address table and realizes, hey, you know what? We've got an entry here for the all A's MAC address. It's off port fast ethernet 01. So then the switch finds port fast ethernet uh, 01 and it sends the message that B sent out that interface. Okay. If there were a dozen other interfaces plugged into this switch, they would not be receiving this message, only the one that has the correct MAC address plugged into it. All right, That message then will come into computer A. Once computer A receives that message, now it will know that the destination IP address it's trying to talk to has the all B's MAC address. And now computer A can send whatever message it originally wanted to to that appropriate destination MAC address. Right. The switch will get that message just like before. Take a look at the all B's destination MAC address. Realize that that all B is off the fast Ethernet 02 port and send that uh, Ethernet frame out that interface. Alright, so that's the, the first example that identifies what happens within the same subnet on a network. Now we'll show you what happens when you're going between subnets on a network. All right, when you're talking about going between subnets, generally we're talking about having to have a router involved. Uh, routers, each router interface typically corresponds with one individual subnet. So in this scenario here, we have the 192.168.1.0 network off this segment of the network, and we have the 192.168.2.0 network off this segment of the network. All right. Since these interfaces on the router are actually nothing more than network cards, that means that we're going to have MAC addresses and IP addresses for that interface on the router. And then the same thing holds here. We've got a MAC address, we've got an IP address, 
on that interface on the ROM. Computers A and B, they both have their own MAC addresses and IP addresses. Notice that A's IP address here works on this subnet of the network, and B's IP address is a little different than the previous example. It works on this subnet of the network. All right, so we know our subnet masks as well. Computer A is going to be configured to know the default gateway IP address and computer A needs to talk to computer B. Computer A is going to find out computer B's IP address once again through a DNS lookup just like what we saw before. Now how do we get that message from computer A to computer B? Well we start off with the anding process again. We take computer B's destination MAC address, we and it with computer A's subnet mask, and we come up with a result. This result is 192.168.2.0. Now computer A compares that result with its own network ID. Well, if we take a look at computer A's network ID, it's a 24-bit mask, so we're talking about having 192.168.1.0 as the network ID. Well, these are not the same, therefore they're on different subnets. Remember in the previous example, when they were the same, that meant that they were on the same subnet. Now they're different, they're on different subnets. All right. So, since computer B is on a different subnet, A can't just give the message off to computer B directly. We can't even just give it to a switch and have the switch take care of it for us. Since computer B is on a different, different network, we're going to have to send this message to our default gateway router. Hey, it's, you know, here's a, a sample network showing maybe what you might have inside a company. If you want to make this maybe more understandable, take Computer B and put it out on Yahoo.com's website, and Computer A maybe can be on the BSU um, network. You know, now you're talking about definitely having to go through the Internet to get to the destination. The principle is going to be the same. Here we're just trying to get from one subnet to another. All right, so how does Computer A package up this message? Well, the destination IP address is the 2.200 IP address. But we don't know how to get directly to computer B, so we're going to have to pass it on to the default gateway. That default gateway interface has this information for MAC address and IP address. So our default MAC address is going to be this. That's what we put in as the destination MAC. Okay, that's something that's a little bit different. I mean, we're not sending out any ARP requests here because we're talking about ARP being a broadcast-based deal. We're having to go through a router from one router interface to another, so ARP isn't going to work. What we're going to do is we're just going to pass the buck along. We don't know how to get it to computer B. Let's pass it up to the router. So we create this IP packet and Ethernet frame, and as the destination IP address, it will be computer B's IP address, but for the destination MAC, it's going to be our default gateway's MAC address. All right. Once the switch receives this information, um, of course it's going to add an entry to its MAC address table if it needs to. But what it's also going to do is take a look at that destination MAC address. That destination MAC was the all C's MAC. So it'll look up in its MAC address table and hopefully have an entry here indicating that this router is plugged into port FA02. Okay. It's plugged into that port, so we forwarded out that interface. The router then gets the message. The router's looking at this and saying, all right, it is the destined MAC address. Okay, so it makes sure that it is the one that's actually supposed to re receive this message. But it looks at the destination IP address. And when it does that, it realizes, hey, wait a minute, that's not my IP address. Destination IP address is 2.200. I'm 1.1 here on this interface. Something's not right. This is really not meant for me to be the end recipient. So then it realizes, all right, then what I must have to do then is look in my routing table. I'll look in my routing table and see if I have anything that gets me off to the 2.0 network. So it looks up in the routing table, realizes that this is the interface we have to send our packet out through. So it packages up a brand new Ethernet frame, putting its MAC address as a source MAC address and putting computer B's MAC address as a destination MAC address, leaving the destination IP as is, just sends it off the interface. Right, so what we have then is we have this router 
taking the message that came from A, stripping off all of the Ethernet information, just leaving the IP and the TCP components, and then creating a brand new Ethernet frame, taking the original IP packet and throwing it in there. Having the new source MAC address and the new destination MAC address. And when we have that then, that message is going to come into the switch. The switch looks at that destination MAC address. Hopefully it will have an entry in its MAC address table that identifies which interface we're supposed to send it out through. And then it sends it out through that interface. All right. When computer B gets this message, it takes a look at the destination MAC address, sees that it's the all B's MAC address, so it knows that it is the intended recipient. Computer B then can do whatever it's supposed to do with that message. And that is how intersubnet communication works, dealing with communication between subnets. Uh, typically, that means that you have to involve a router somewhere, and when you talk about routers, you're typically going to be talking about your default gateways have to be configured on your computers. So that is your basic Ethernet communication on a TCP IP routed network.